Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, it's been a little while since we've done live, so figured it's Friday. It's a good day for a live. So welcome. Nice to see everybody. Um, I am Carrie the Mortician, and I answer any of your questions live about funeral homes, cemeteries, cremation, headstones. If I can answer, I answer, or else we kind of put it for the next one, and I'll investigate. So a uh, little bit of a new setup. Um, <clears throat> my whole basement flooded, ripped out, you know, about 900 square feet of carpet. So I had to relocate the office for now. Kind of a boring background, ain't gonna lie, but that's okay. Welcome everybody. Hi, suicidal. Yeah, my mortuary crew, it's um, kind of the monthly pay and do some extras. I am not providing enough content there. And I know that, um, thinking about just closing it down because it's almost like, I don't want to let people down. I have, I don't have the extra time to kind of do some special stuff over there. I appreciate the support. So kind of debating on that. Hey, Matthew. Um, so I don't know what will become of the mortuary crew in that way, but I just hate disappointing people. And if it's a little extra stress, just cause I got to do extra stuff, it's maybe not worth it. And I'd rather just keep doing content as a whole. So we'll figure that out. But yeah, it's, it's been, a, it's been a hot minute. So me and Josh and the girls traveled and his son traveled down to Blue Ridge mountains. I debated doing a meet and greet cause there are several of you down in the area. It's stunning down there. We laid across like the state line and took pictures in the one town that has that. That was super fun. Super, super fun. We really just focused on enjoying our time. Um, so didn't really do literally any work. It was beautiful. Got home for a hot minute. House had been flooded. My router had fried, exploded, search protector burned up. Great stuff. Um, and then I left to go to Santa Fe where I went to the Shark Tank premiere, um, viewing party for Parting Stone. So there'll be videos coming soon about Parting Stone and that company, which is where they take cremated remains, like a whole set of cremated remains and turn them into a whole box of stones. And I took my dog, um, with me on the plane and dropped him off. So watch for, um, some videos about, how to bring cremated remains on an airplane. You guys asked, and I actually got to walk the walk and see firsthand how to do it and what reactions were with TSA. So watch for that video. If I could get my phone to download to the cloud, it has been like days of it not wanting to download. Technology. So, um... Oh no, suicide, I'm not gonna leave. Um, just the mortuary crew, like the, the paid monthly thing, I might just not have that available just cause I can't do enough for it. Is there a difference in the way you care for prepare males and females? There's really not. The only thing with females, if we're, and when you say prepared, I'm going to go down the embalming route. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Um, we just ensure if, the breasts are kind of falling to the side. We bring them up front for the embalming so that they're fixated in a more natural position rather than down in the armpits. Um, I would say like a C cup and above might about be when they kind of start falling to the side and are not in a natural position. Some embalmers will tape them up. Some will suture them, uh, stitch through under each nipple. I know, ouch, right? And some will use a clamp. It just depends. But that is one thing we do on females that is different. Some embalmers will inject the scrotum area to get some um, preservative right in there. There's different things some embalmers do depending on what they've encountered over their time. Not a lot is different, though. Not a lot. Good morning, everybody. It's only morning for another half hour, but that's okay. Oh, Delinda says, this is so weird. I'm actually ironing my clothes to go 
to a funeral home. My brother, husband's brother passed suddenly. That is sad. Um, I'm so sorry. So we'll be thinking about you while you go do that. Brian, different dyes between females and males. So yes and no. It also depends on skin color, race, um, and if there's a ye uh, yellower under hues or pinker under hues, definitely women tend to be more pink under hued where men are yellow, orangier. It just depends. Um, and we can kind of tell from the person and from the race, ethnicity, some of that. My brother was advised to keep my mom's cremains in a drinking bottle on him as to not upset other travelers on the airplane. It's a terrible idea. Terrible, terrible, terrible idea. Um, I don't know who advised him of that, but that's terrible. So just as TSA says, you place them in a, a container that can go through the x-ray so that they can easily distinguish what it is. They may wipe it to check with the chemical for any residue of explosives. And then you just carry them on the plane, keep them in a backpack or something and put them at your feet or up top. But if you put them in a water bottle, that looks super suspicious when you're going through security, super suspicious. And I'm sorry, but screw everybody else on the plane. Not really concerned about their feelings. You're bringing your loved one where you need to bring them. That's my thought. Maybe that's mean that I just said screw all them, <laughs> but, oh, How do you embalm a body that was dismembered or in pieces? You embalm the pieces. If they can be reconnected, you reconnect them. Um, but you just treat and preserve each piece as you would. So the main question on this one on our front slide was, how do we practice our embalming skills? Like, how do we start to learn to embalm? How do we continue our growth learning to embalm? Do we have practice people we get to practice on. So in mortuary school, there's a few different setups. One, the lab is on site and we either get donated bodies or local funeral homes will send their bodies over to the funeral home with permission from the families to be embalmed and then taken back to the funeral home for viewing and everything. That's one way. That's how I, I learned for the most part. Or that's how, when I was in school, it was done. I had done my apprenticeship before school. So I had embalmed, you know, a good number of bodies before I went to school. Some schools, you have to find a proctoring funeral home that will work with the school for you to go in and observe and learn hands-on there. So there's a few different options. We have an apprenticeship where we have to participate in so many embalmings before we can be done with our apprenticeship. And then repetition, working with different embalmers, learning different skills and techniques, being exposed to different situations, you know, more infants, more um, trauma loss, all these different things. That's how we get our skills is by encountering certain things numerous times. If you embalm a child or infant or baby once every three, four years, you're not going to have great skill on it because you need to have repetition. There are clinics we can go to, like continuing at hours, where we can go learn different restoration techniques. We can go embalm with other people. Those are typically donated bodies that are donated to science. And rather than go to a medical school or you know wherever else they may go to for donation, they would come to the, the mortuary school or the learning facility to then get to practice with. Um, we had cadavers in school for anatomy dissection class that we got to dissect and look where everything was laid out in the structure. The only difference is those bodies have been preserved for that kind of a donation. And so everything is typically gray. Everything inside is like this. It's a very specific smell. I can smell it like right now. Um, but everything is one color where in a live person or a just deceased person, you're going to have varying colors because you're going to still have vessels are going to be very white. Your arteries, your veins are going to be uh, dark purple with some blood in them. 
you can tell difference between things that way. Whereas a donated body to science, well, when preserved, has that grayish, funky color. Do you guys remember um, like high school class? Did you guys ever dissect frogs or dissect fetal, uh, feral pigs or fetal pigs or whatever kind of pigs? They have that distinct smell and they're all that same grayish color. But so we, we learn by those means. We find different things. I found these things the other day online. Look. They're from Sheen, actually, has all of these. This, I want to see if we can practice gluing mouths closed and then waxing the mouth. So it's just like a learning tool. So I'm going to see if it holds other mediums, different kind of mouth. Oops, different kind of mouths. And I have a whole head, actually, that's made out of this silicone, rubbery, silicone stuff. Um, and I think these might be good for practice and teaching. So I'm going to try it out and see. The funeral director adopted family of mine don't do corner removals or embalming. They only pick up from hospital. I keep telling them they're so boring. They miss out on the good stuff. Well, it might not be by choice. They just may not get those calls. And you really don't get a choice in where you pick up from. So... I think it used to be Cosmo for female and Vita Hue for male, unless I got those switch. Yeah, ours don't have names. It's just like tan one and pink one and tan two and pink two for the dye from the companies I've always seen. How long after death does a body begin to stiffen? My sister-in-law passed away last month. Hospice said she had been recently checked on just before we got there. Still very warm, very stiff. So rigor mortis sets in after about two hours. That's when the proteins and everything in the muscles start changing and decomposing and breaking down. And that's the body starts getting stiff. That is going to go away after about, they say about 48 hours is pretty average. So that's there for about two days. However, that can be loosened up. It's called breaking up the rigor. We're not actually breaking any bones or anything you take a very tensed up arm and you, and all of a sudden it gives loose because you're taking this muscle that's bound up and you're relaxing it out and you're stretching it. So you're breaking up the rigor that's built up in it, you're not breaking any body. So that is all gone after embalming. All gone. So a body is not stiff because of rigor anymore after embalming. It is firm because of the preservation of the chemicals. Very different things. I'm curious as to what airline you flew that has a special policy for traveling with cremains. Every airline has a policy. Every single one. Everyone. So I went in and researched all the airlines TSA read up on every single thing for all of it about how to travel with cremated remains. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you. You lost my your best friend a few days ago. Not sure how to grieve or what to do. There's no book on how to grieve. There's no right or wrong with what to do. Follow your gut. If you're having a fine day, you're not emotional, that's okay. If you're super sad, can't seem to stop crying, that's okay. If you're that way a year later, then there's concern. If you're debilitated from living life after a long period of time, that's a concern. Do what you need to do. Look at videos, look at photos. That's how we remember. That's how we begin healing and moving into the next phase of our own lives while we're still here. There's, there's no right or wrong there. I graduate from Mortuary Science School this May. What's your best advice for passing the national board? I've been studying like a madman. So Lydia, a lot of the national board are terms and things you're not, you're not going to really use ever in conversation, in talking as a funeral director. You need to learn it all for that national board. So it is literally cramming things in your head so that you can take that test. 
find someone random from another school to study with that can maybe help you learn a few words in a different way. So like retort and inline. These are two types of crematories or cremators. Retort and inline. The inline is in a straight line. The body goes in, the exhaust goes out and up. It's all in a line. Where the retort, it goes in, passes over the body, goes to a second chamber and then goes out. It is recombusting it. That is the retort style. So if you can find some people to study with that can maybe help you learn some of those words in a little different phrase, that is always great. Also, there's a big one. Read the question slowly. They may have trick answers in there that want you to, they may want you to pick on because you're reading too fast and you're assuming what the question says. Read the question slowly. Take out any answers you know it is not and see what you have left. You could have the same question with two different sets of answers and two different main answer because both are actually accurate. It just depends on the set of answers you're given for it. So you, some questions may have multiple answers, but they're not all going to be in the same question, if that makes sense. So read things slowly. Good advice just in general. Well, and Kathleen, she may have passed away before, you know, they pronounced. It doesn't take long for rigor mortis to set in and the body does not always, does not all die at the same time. So that's why bodies can get stinky. They can start turning green in the abdomen, which is the first sign of decomposition when the heart is still pumping. Body parts can be dead and decomposing before the whole person is. So she may have developed some rigidity prior to even being dead. Is it hard for embalming fluid to reach the nose? I remember my mother-in-law's nose by the second day started to look funky. So your nose, your eyelids, your fingertips, it's all very thin tissue. Your lips are going to dehydrate really quickly. And so your nose is one thing that can dehydrate very quickly. You got air moving past. If there's air on in the house or it's going to sweep over the body and your nose sticks up, so it's going to dehydrate that tip of your nose pretty quickly. Kim, what airline does your mom work for? Because I have found no airline that doesn't have a policy on it. When my fiance passed away, he looked great at his service. Did not look like himself. So Ida, I need a lot more information. What was his cause of death? How long was he dead before he died, you know, before they found him? Did he go for an autopsy? A lot of things. Was he a heavier person weight-wise? My dad died of prostate cancer on my 13th birthday. I'm nearly 36. I didn't grieve or anything because death never bothers me, but because I'm struggling bad, I'm now grieving him hard. I need him so much. So you grieve, you're always grieving. Always. You just don't know it. And it may be in things that you're not understanding our grief. Lashing out at somebody. Irrational anger withdrawing. There's all things that are grief manifested that may not look like crying and all these things that you believe grief are. So we grieve in different ways. And yes, it can cycle back later in life when you, you need that person or that relationship of a parent or a sibling or a grandparent it comes back and it comes back in waves. You're welcome, Catherine. Um, oh, I had something else I was going to talk to you guys about. And whoo, I have been this week. It's like words are just gone. Um, I teach a mortuary school class at fine 
um, Mortuary College out of Boston area. And we had a guest speaker from Return Home, which is a terramation or um, composting facility out west, hoping to travel there soon. Guys, this process is so interesting now that I'm diving in and learning more about it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable process. It is quickly being legalized across the country, far quicker than alkaline hydrolysis. So it may be coming to your area much quicker than you ever imagined. Um, and it's just, it's such a cool process, such a cool process. So I don't want to talk about it too much just because I'm hoping to do a video on it soon, but yeah, it's, it's fan, fantastic. Ida, so he passed away sometime in the night. I found him around 7 a.m. Was he in bed or did you find him in the bathroom? Something. Um, so especially if he is heavier, often if they die laying down, if someone heavier dies laying down, a lot of that pressure comes up to the head with the blood. So the head can become really engorged and become dark purple, dark red, darkened color because of that. And once it sets in and, and kind of stains the skin, we can't really wash it out very well. We can use a lot of cosmetics and then they look really painted. So it's kind of a catch 22. If he was laying on his face, definitely would have been very darkened color. And that does not all move out when we do the embalming. So that is going to be one of the main reasons I am going to guess. Yeah. If he was on the living room floor, especially face down or not, and he was heavier set, that is going to be why. Hey, Ken. Okay. So he's on his side. So definitely it's going to be in one side of his face was going to probably have been darker than the other, especially the ears. The ears get a little swelled and they get super dark, almost blackened um, from someone laying in. It doesn't take very long for that color to, to change like that. That is going to be why. So do you guys live in an area that has composting? I would love to know your thoughts on composting and if you would ever choose it for yourself or not choose it for yourself, what, what, what you think about it. Um, love to know. I think it's a fascinating, fascinating option. Yeah, Christine, I would love almost to get ahead. I want to just like build a facility here just to have it ready whenever it's legal. No, you don't have composting yet in um, England. Yeah, Joshua, I saw that too. It was legalized in California, but won't be. It will be years before it's available to consumers. I don't understand why it's years. It's like okay, if it's legalized, what's the hold up? <laughs> like, why can you not just move forward? That makes no sense. Do you think funeral homes need to have dress policies for prisoners coming to a funeral from a prison? No. No. Because they are still under guard and they should still have handcuffs and everything on. Everyone I've ever had brought in has... I take that back. I think one time they did take off. I'm picturing one a situation that he did not have on cuffs. Um, but almost every other time they've, they've been cuffed when they come in in their jumpsuit and they are in a jumpsuit for a reason. They're cuffed for a reason. They're under guard still for a reason. And often nobody can be there from the family, even when they're brought in, depending on the level of, um, their crime. And so it's all for a reason. So no, I don't think that they should, um, dress like every other funeral attendee or, or anything. Um, yeah, Ida. So explains why it looked like he had a bruise on his ear. I assumed he fell and bruised his ear. No, that's going to be, have been the lowest point. So the most blood will have pooled in there. 
everything, you know, it's gravity. And if you laid for a few hours, it's all going to have gone there. Yeah, water cremation, I think, will be mainstream eventually, but you have more departments that have to authorize it, like the water department. A lot more EPA, a lot more everything. Do my body be safe at funeral home? Do my casket be there? How I meet you at Bloody Cone? Um, yeah, your body is safe at a funeral home, for the most part. There's always shady people. There's always naughty people, as we know from the naughty videos. But for the most part, yes, you are safe and respected and cared for there. How long does the deceased stay preserved after the embalming process? There's no timeline. So it might be a minute. It might be years. There is no timeline. It is a short-term temporary preservation to hopefully get the person through the viewing and the service before burial. This is not a forever thing. And it can go, it, it may not be even long enough for that. All these medications that we take, we are a pharmaceutical heavy society, heavy society. Those medications affect how embalming chemicals work. And we don't know what everybody is on and how exactly they're going to react. Um, we don't know you know, what the levels are within people in terms of sodium and potassium and all these things that are in us naturally, but our levels may be so off that affects the embalming process. So there are far too many variables to ever be able to answer that. How popular are drive-by visitations? Not really um, anymore. During COVID, they became a popular thing so that people could still have others come express their condolence, but not have any contact, but we don't need to do that now. And so they've kind of gone to the wayside. So water cremation, a lot of people hate the term water cremation because cremation is defined by using heat to break down a body or a flame to break down a body. Whereas alkaline hydrolysis, which is water cremation, is using a tube filled with water being heated, not boiled, with lye chemicals in it, that kind of gyrate and move around the body and break down the body. All of the soft tissue is removed. Um, you're left with your skeletal structure, which is then cremulated down to cremated remains to be returned to the family. Process takes about seven hours or so. Price is typically comparable to flame cremation, but because that solution goes down the drain, water you know, water companies and stuff have a huge problem with it. It's the most sterile thing you could find, but they're still having issues. With the composting, is it cremains? No, you are getting back compost. Um, about 250 pounds, I believe it was, of compost material, which is about 5% uh, the person within that composting. So it's a small percentage person in the material you're getting back but you have a lot of material you can take. You can take all of it. You can take none of it. You can take some of it. What is left, they will go spread in the forest. We don't, does my body be guarded at the funeral home? No. I'm going to be 55 this month as I've aged. I think about my death often because many people around me have passed through the years. No, there's really not. Death and public speaking are the two biggest, greatest fears in the world for humans. Death is scary. The more you educate yourself about death and about beliefs and everything, the more comfortable you may become with it. So there is a lot of people that seek out material like my videos and content because it answers questions that seem scary, but once you know the actual legit answers, calm some fears. So educate, 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 educate. There's no specific I would guide you to, but educate. Um, hospice nurse Julie, who I've had on as a guest, talks about the death process very openly, very honestly, helps people become a little more comfortable with what happens in death. 
So that's what I would say. We had a break-in at our directors years ago. It was awful. I won't go in. Set. Ah. Oh. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, that would be terrible. Why would you go into a funeral home and mess around with bodies? ATM, yay! You're, you've been moved from hospice to palliative care because your neuroblastoma is shrinking. That is amazing. Amazing. Yay. Cremation all the way. I think it's good to have those conversations. There's so many people who don't or like parents and their children that are grown children that the parents think the kids don't want to talk or the kids think the parents don't want to talk, but both of them would like to have the conversation, but nobody ever says anything because they assume have the conversation, ask, talk to your loved ones, say, what would you want to do if you were, if you die? What, what do you think you'd want for yourself? Factor that in then to your decisions when the time comes, it doesn't have to be everything, just what they want. It's about what you need after they're gone. So don't feel guilted into just following what they want. You also have to factor in and come up with a plan together that meets both sides of it. So do not feel guilty if you choose to have a service when they say they don't want a service because you need a service for them. Don't feel guilty. With alkaline hydrolysis, would you still need to be cremulated or are the remains reduced enough? No, they're large pieces of bone. So yes, they have to be dried out and then cremulated. No worries, suicidal. You're, you're doing good. I can read what you're typing. Ken, that's amazing. Because of your education, our family openly discussed end of life without fear. It's so important. I feel like I need to do weekly lectures, have the conversation, talk to your family. Sure, Christmas and Thanksgiving are going to have a little bit of a down moment, but that's when you're typically all together, where all the kids are there, the parents are there, whoever it is that needs to be part of the conversation, bring it up, have the conversation. It doesn't have to be long, but at least get a little bit of information about it all. Recently, the day my relative died, they said his vitals were good. He died that night. Can your vitals be good as you die? They can. You can go from perfectly healthy to dead very, very quickly. There can be a lot of underlying issues, a lot of problems, especially hospice patients have a research often, 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 right before death to have a really good day. They haven't been able to walk for a while. They've been too weak and they're up and moving. And then they die the next day. This happens often. It's just a surge of adrenaline energy. One last good moment before death happens a lot. Well, Candy, so one of you dies, the other one takes care of you. But then when the second die, one dies, someone has to take care of them. So you've got to have that in place so that it can be done. You guys are welcome. Thank you guys for joining on this random Friday. Um, I haven't gotten many questions to answer on this in the last two weeks. So didn't have any emails really to respond to. I think I've responded to them directly when I have gotten them. So if you have questions, you're welcome to email me at carry at carry the mortician.com. I'll answer them on the next uh, coffee video, which is what this is coffee with Carrie. We have our coffee, we chat, or I'll answer you directly, or you can go to carry the mortician.com and there's a coffee with Carrie page and you can submit your question there. You can buy me a cup of coffee to share during one of the videos, which is kind of fun. Um, do you feel some type of cremation will take over burial and popularity? Not really. I think composting is going to give a good run for its money. I think that there's a lot of options for a lot of different opinions. We are not one like-minded, you know, society. So I think having lots of options is really good.
<laughs> Christine says, I'm putting send me to carry on my <laughs> in my will. That's hilarious. Me and my dad went to pre-planning meeting. The only we got the PK on is casket color. That's interesting. Well, and you know that, does that in the end really matter? You're looking at a casket for like two days and then it goes in the ground. So not worth an argument ever. Well, thank you guys. I'm going to log off. Uh, I got to go do some editing. Hopefully if I can get literally still nothing has synced. Nothing. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they're not sinking, but it's driving me nuts because by golly, I want to get some videos edited. A lot of content I need to get downloaded. More Josh, please. We'll do Josh. I'll go live with Josh next week. How about um, maybe Monday night? We'll do a live and can talk. Um, he's been doing body removals, actually, working for a removal company a little bit. That's been a whole new world for him. You know, after 27 years doing burial vaults, the people arrive in a casket and then doing cremations where he's not seeing very many bodies to all of a sudden he is seeing all the bodies in all the different ways. Suicides, overdoses, accidents. He is seeing everything. And he's like, this is a whole new side to the death care business. So it's kind of, It's nice to have him experience some of what I experience and what I see and being able to talk about that together and, you know, the realities, I guess. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool in a weird way, <laughs> in a death care love sort of way. Oh, no kidnapping me. No kidnapping me. I do enjoy coming to the UK, so no, it's not a problem. I just don't want to be kidnapped there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's nice when you know who's coming to take your loved one away, Christine. Funerals here in the U.S., the very from jury and state, the ones in the South are so elaborate. It's a true celebration. Yeah. It is amazing how much variety there is here in the U.S., just, count, you know, town to town, city to city, let alone region to region. It's quite mind blowing. So there's things you may ask me about that have never transpired here in vanilla little Michigan. I think we're very vanilla. We're kind of mainstream, old school, a lot here in Michigan. And so um, I, we encounter a lot of stuff, but some of the things that we just have, n I've never encountered or known anybody who has here in our area. So it's fun for me to research and dive in and to maybe if I can set it up, go experience it somewhere else so I can report back on it for you guys. That's pretty fun. So thank you for joining me and I will see you guys soon and we will try, hopefully maybe Monday night, I will try and plan on that, that we can Go live um, with Josh. You guys can ask burial questions, crematory questions, body removal questions. Now he's getting quite the um, forte of, of experience in the death care business. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye.